Hello, friends. Today, this time, I am joined with Jere, who is looking quite porky at the moment because it's just that time of year where he just puts on a few and honestly can relate. The last time I did one of these videos was literally over a year ago and I've been planning this one for about a year or so, possibly more. It is surprising how difficult it is to film these because it takes so long to get all the gear for them. As you might imagine, considering I have to get three sets of gear at three different prices, and match all the gear. A lot of people on the last video I did of this, which was recreating a schooling outfit in three different price ranges, a lot of people said that they could get gear a lot cheaper. Like I had a lot of comments that were like, I got my gloves for $3 on eBay, or my friend gave me all her stuff, so I got all my riding outfits for free, or my boots were on Craigslist or Gumtree for $10. I am very glad that you guys are getting some bargains. <laughs> However, the point of these videos is to match really expensive gear with cheaper gear. So like match the three different price ranges. And for me, at the time and in this video and what was available to me and what I found online and what wasn't expensive with international shipping or whatever, this is what I've come up with. I ended up borrowing this first saddle from a friend because I was not going to buy a cheap saddle just for a video. So, kill. Jarrett is my model and I hope you enjoy this video which is going to take me three days to film. Alrighty, to start off with ladies and gentlemen, we have the brown saddle pad because, you know, all my gear is brown so might as well. Get a brown one. This is by the brand Showmaster. It was this price. That's pretty much the cheapest one I could find that matched my scheme. Still got the tag on because I literally got it for the video. I've never seen a tag that's literally just like safety pinned on, just like a safety pin, not even a little string with it, just, just a safety pin. I must say, I actually am very, very impressed with the quality of these two things for how cheap they were. It does look a little small on him, perhaps the thumbnail. Are you happy now because I'm talking to you? Derek is nervous because there's a whole lighting and mirror setup going on behind the camera and so he's like, who is that? Okay, so next is the saddle and like I said, I borrowed this from a friend. Now this isn't entirely accurate because this is actually a GP saddle, not a jump saddle, but I figured GP saddle, you can still jump in it. It's brown, it's leather, matches the other ones pretty well aside from being a GP. I don't know how much these would have been back in the day. I get the gist that it was made in the 80s. It is Sid Hill and Sons, Suprema Quality, Brisbane, Australia. They have been going since 1865, very impressive. But yeah, I don't really know a whole lot else about it about what year it is or anything but I know it's very old and so it would be quite cheap to buy. This sort of saddle would be like $200 max probably. That would be my guess especially being a GP. I do need to clean it too. The other things that are on it, the stirrup leathers and stuff, I'm not sure either how much they cost. Oh a core steel, they're actually quite Good stirrups. Oh, Jerry, you're eating the pad again. He's a pretty standard medium gullet. Maybe a little tight with the numb there as well, but it's actually pretty good. I think I will actually just give him a light ride in it because might as well, and it fits him like decent clearance, and it's giving his spine a lot of room. It's definitely not pinching. So yeah, I might as well ride in it. Oh my God, can you see that? Also, I like how this one's just being completely cut off. <laughs> she moldy. Okay, so this is now the saddle on him properly and actually cleaned. And yeah, like I said, it fits quite well. So I'm just going to ride in this today and actually feel the difference of this price tack versus my other stuff. Okay, so here's the girth. And we have our first absolute utter fail 
in this video. This girth is for short points. These are long points. I just didn't even consider it at all. It's a great girth, I love it, and it was only $80 from Goodwoods, I'm pretty sure, and I will definitely be using it. It's really nice and soft and good quality and very impressed, but we're gonna pretend these are short points and we're gonna pretend I'm putting on this, but I'm actually just gonna have to put on my short girth, unfortunately. But do I get points for the fact that I bought a stud girth and that's to match the expensive tack? As you can see, even with it completely up to the top, excuse the mold, it is well and truly too loose. And doesn't this just look so stupid and ridiculous? I just did not consider it at all. Did I, Jerry? I'm very silly. Yes. Okay, as you can see, saddle girth is on. This breastplate is actually one that my trainer, in fact, designed probably in the 90s, I want to say. And this one had mold on it, so he was not selling it in his store. Instead, it was given to me and I just removed the mold. This looks very small. I'm definitely going to have to adjust, I think, for Mr. Frisian chest. Okay, so far so good. Already on the loosest. That's not ideal. No clips back in these days, just buckles. And this, if you're wondering, is just one of my attack charms that I've put on from my brand. Thank God they don't make breastplates. So hard to put on like this one. I could just imagine like stressfully doing this just before cross country or something and freaking out about it because this is not quick. This is quite a process. What is happening? <laughs> I can't tell where the hole is. Over it, Jerry. Doing another hole. Oh my god, that took literally forever. Jerry, that was horrible. Interesting. I didn't even notice that it had this clip here because it's just not really a thing anymore. I've just unclipped it and it would have been a whole lot easier. Ta da! Finally! Interesting how it only has that clip on one side. It's a little tighter than what I'd like, but that will do, I think. Okay, so the next thing is boots. I got these off eBay. They are brown, going with the theme. I think they were from China, like direct from China. And I think they were just like a manufacturer that literally just does unlabeled boots. I'm honestly quite impressed with the quality of these though. They're honestly just like a Roma boot, but unlabeled. I have a lot of boots that are like this, so the only difference really is the price. Ta-da! Boots are on. It's looking a little bit mixed match with the different shades of brown, but still quite pleased. Are you pleased? No, no you're not. Okay, so the final thing is the bridle, obviously. And also the bit. The bit, I will first say, I actually use this bit for all of my horses. It's a $30 training snaffle that I have bought and rebought from eBay. It might actually be $40 or something, but usually I get it from the UK with postage and it's still so affordable. And it's literally what I use with all my horses because most of my horses I've kind of made to have quite a sensitive mouth. So it just works for them. Dexter, I didn't used to use it on him, but now I do. And he works really well in it, and Jerry works really well in it. Okay, so here we have the bridle, which was from eBay. Another unbranded, pretty sure it came direct from China. I think it's real leather, but it is really average real leather. Jerry has a pin head, so this is understandable. I don't really like plaited leather look anymore. I kind of used to, not so much anymore. I just gave him a treat, that's why he's doing this also. Yeah, look, it, it's, it's huge. 
This bridle is massive. This throat latch is literally to the top on both sides. This is to the top on both sides. This is to the top and I've put two holes in it and it's still way too low. So I don't know, it must have been built for a draft horse or something because Jerry usually takes a full aside from brow bands, but this is far, far from a full. This is definitely warm blood. This is more like draft horse to be completely honest with you. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jerry, you are drowning. Hey Dexter. Dexter's just roaming around the property. And that's without mentioning the hideous, canary yellow reins that it for some reason has. Imagine these when they're dirty after a while. What a look, honestly. So all around, absolutely hate this bridle a lot, but hey, this is my cheap tack setup. Jerry is on the catwalk, ta-da. <laughs> God, please. We have my cheap tack set up, which in total ends up costing this amount, which I think is pretty good for a full tack set up with saddle, with bridle, with boots, with breastplate, with girth. The girth I am saying is the $80 stud girth, by the way. It looks kind of nice. It's definitely got the brown theme. I mean, this color brown is definitely different to this color brown and that color brown, but look, we're spending pennies here in, in a horse world. Jerry is not happy about it. In the time that I filmed this, it has turned from early afternoon to evening. We will see you tomorrow with second lot of very much more expensive things, not cheap as you can possibly get at things. As you can imagine, the consensus from riding in it is I much prefer my saddles. They are a lot comfier. They fit me a lot better. They fit Jerry a lot better. And technology in the equestrian sport has come a, a long way in the last, I want to say, 40 years since that saddle. Or maybe even 50 years, honestly, who knows? Probably. Good morning, friends. Welcome to day two of filming. Today we are doing the reasonable priced tack. I would say, like, middle ground tack. I have Dexter, if you couldn't tell, instead of Jerry. Yesterday, I don't know. I feel like using Jerry. Today, I feel like using Dex. They're both bay. It's... Ow! Are we excited? Yes, we are. If you annoy me, I'm gonna annoy you even more. Yeah, we're really, we're really excited. Really, really excited. Yeah, yeah! All right, let's go. Okay, so first, saddle pad, obviously. And if you didn't know, it's my favorite brand ever, Lumiere. It's just got one of my iron-on patches on it that I got for myself and my sponsored riders. These are available from Southern Sport Horses, which is actually owned by my trainer, funnily enough. And so is this. I've had this for years. I've had them both for years, to be fair. I would say I bought my first one in 2013. That pretty much says exactly how much I love these. Love the half pad. I actually want to get another one because I only really have that one that I actually quite like. My other half pads are a bit average for my saddles and how they fit and everything like that. Now for the most expensive item of tack of course, we have the saddle. This one I have had again since 2013, so seven years, and it really did me well for that amount of time, but I actually want to sell it after this video. It is a Pessoa Gen X and I don't actually really have any stirrups that are mid-priced, so these are just some free jumps that I have that are my blue free jumps, obviously. As much as I loved this saddle, it just didn't fit me very well. It fit Jerry quite well, not so much how his movement was though. It fit Dexter a lot better than Jerry, but as for me, I just found it's probably a bit long in the back, like I didn't feel super secure in it. and. It's more of a saddle that is built for people that don't like to be held in the saddle very much, but I like to be held in the saddle because I'm quite tall. The less lankiness that I have to deal with, the more like a saddle holds me, the better, in my opinion. So yes, this is me, me for sure. And I got it from Bonnets. 
saddle world. Okay, now the girth. This is the Aventus Boutique and it also has lasted me really well, but it just had to have, excuse. However, it just had to have this re-stitched back into it. So that's what that is. That's the only issue I've had with it. Aside from that, I've really liked this girth the whole time that I've had it. I think I've had it for probably about a year and a half. I just soiled it, that's why it looks kind of weird. <laughs> but it matches also the saddle so perfectly. Okay, next, the breastplate. Hopefully it fits with this saddle. I haven't actually ever tried it on with it before because I bought it specifically for this video. <laughs> So this is also the Aventus Boutique. It matches the girth pretty much perfectly. I also have a five point breastplate from the Aventus Boutique, but the whole point of this video was to match as much as possible. So I couldn't use a five point one, but this one is also a lot more affordable than the five point one. But this is a bit loose maybe, but it's on the tightest one. Doesn't fit him great, but I could put a few holes in it, but I don't think I'm gonna be using this much, so. I'm just gonna leave it like that. He's got a tiny chest. But there we have it, the breastplate. Not a whole lot more to say about that, to be fair. It matches well with the saddle, don't you reckon? Yeah. Okay, first of all, I kind of just realized there's about a million flies in here, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. Also the wind, because there's about to be a storm this afternoon. But these boots are also Lemure. Hello? Of course they are. <laughs> These are also from Southern Sport Horses, and these were fairly affordable, I believe. I quite like how many vents they have in them. I bought these for training purposes because they're just Velcro. They're not the buckle ones that you'll see later on. Me alone, guys. gentlemen obviously the bridle this is a miklum you can't get them in this color anymore um excuse this color is discontinued and has been for probably like eight years so the chances of finding it are pretty slim now but i also have one in the new darker brown color but this is one i always have used and these have pretty much stayed the same price around 200 for a long time and they're available from places like Horseware and the Bitbank and places like that. The reins are Pessoa reins because the Micklum reins are long gone. I killed them long ago. And the bit, I couldn't actually find the price anywhere that it was brand new because this bit is also I think discontinued but I did find it for $70 on eBay. USD so it's a fairly expensive bit it's a double jointed with wings which kind of help with turning I haven't used this on him in so long so I'm gonna be interested to see how he goes in it now I reckon it actually could be quite good for him because it's similar to the one he currently has but just has these wings and it's not copper and sweet iron combination that's his head shake is that little twitch because he's been eating hay that isn't his. He's been eating hay with sugar. Naughty pony. So yeah, this is it. So here we have it. The second most expensive or middle priced jumping tack setup. I quite like this. This is a tack setup that I was happy with for years and years until I realized that I could have found another saddle that was way better for me because this one was not so good for my position. At the start it was when I was learning, but maybe not so much after years and years and years. What do you think? Do you care? No. Oh, kind of. Maybe, no. 
So my camera just died. But yeah, I really like the look of the setup and it's quite aesthetically pleasing. Hello. He's over it. He wants to go. He wants to go sleep in his in his little paddock. And he wants to go eat the rest of his hay because Someone eats very slowly. Hello and welcome to the most expensive tack. We are starting off with a silver crown saddle pad in brown, of course, keeping our theme. And then we've got a total saddle fit numna, which is like the split numna, I'm not sure. I think it's called like a wither relief numna or something maybe, but it's like this. It's different than I've ever seen before. But I quite like it and you can put inserts in it so it currently has back rises in it at the moment. It is a little bit big for my saddles and for my horses because they do run a bit big. But that's not what this video is about. Okay, next of course we have the saddle which is the Equiline, don't know what it is <laughs> to be honest, saddle the one that just has the plastic bit here and there not like all the way up there. And then I've also got the matching Equiline stud girth. I love this stud girth, it's so soft and I absolutely love this saddle too. Even though I have upgraded to another saddle, I am keeping this one because I love it so much and I just want a cheaper jump saddle so I don't just have a really, really, really expensive jump saddle and nothing else to put on young horses and etc. And then, of course, my brown free jump stirrups. These I love and have been using for like seven years. Can't say anything bad about them. I still have my first pair, which I use for probably six years, at least twice a week. And they still look brand new. And then, I don't know what these stirrup leathers are. I haven't yet bought stirrup leathers, but we're going to pretend they're the Equiline ones so we can just have a running theme on what brand this setup is. Okay, now onto the breastplate. This is an Antares breastplate. I've had for so many years, once again, and still love it. It's not really the right color scheme for this saddle and girth and etc. but it is the most expensive breastplate that I own. So there we have it. This is actually stretched a fair bit since I've owned it, which kind of sucks. But I feel like you could probably cut off a bit of it and then just kind of replace it. And I will be buying the same one again or maybe one that's leather and then it has a little bit of elastic because obviously these do stretch as I have found out. Okay, moving on to boots of course next. And these are my absolute favorite boots ever. They're my favorite brand to buy and they are Veritas. And they are the Grand Slam version so they've got vents down the bottom they've got gold on them I don't know if that makes them any more special but I like gold okay <laughs> absolutely love these boots I have used my other Veritas boots for probably about six years I want to say and they still look pretty much completely new aside from obviously some marks on them but I've had these for probably a little less than a year and they still look so good as you can tell. They just kind of scuff a little bit on here but they've also got that little pattern thing so you don't really notice it. So yes, me faves. Okay, yet again, of course, last but not least is the bridle. This is a Dijon bridle. I don't know what more to say about it really. I got it from Just Riding and I've had it for probably three years. I've been using it on Dexter and I really like how it works, especially this type of nose band for him. I really like this bit too. This is Jerry's bit. I haven't actually ever put this right on, on Jerry, so I'm quite interested to see how it looks. But this bit is, I can't remember, but it'll be on the screen now, and it is fairly expensive. I got it second hand. Usually it's quite easy to find a bit like this second hand because sometimes horses only work at the start in such a soft bit and then they kind of become a bit strong but because Jerry is Mr. Sensitive he works very well in a very flexy bit Hello. and there we have it ladies and gentlemen a 
expensive types of <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> really the point of this video is kind of to prove that you don't always need really expensive stuff to do well. You can do it with really cheap stuff as well. That being said, having a nice saddle, a well fitted saddle to you and the horse does really help. And when I had my Pessoa saddle, it just didn't suit me and it didn't suit Jerry very well or at least how he moved. And so I did find when I finally upgraded last year to this saddle, I was so surprised how much it changed my position and how much better I felt in the saddle. And also it made me realize that I was using the wrong saddle for me and my horse for six years. And I probably could have gone a lot further in those six years if I had the right fitting saddle. And so really this video, as much as it shows that you can do things very cheaply, buy things that go best with you and your horse because it does really help. What's happening? He's doing, he's doing the full rundown, either side. Just showing you guys all the angles. What are you doing? Do you want to go? No more lights and scary, scary mirrors, please. Let's go. Let's go ride. Though this is the most expensive one, I am going to show you a bonus one, which is even pricier. Okay, so here we have the most random of all the tag setups, if you couldn't already tell. This is a bonus, the most expensive tack setup that I own that is kind of still in the realm of all the other ones. So the same boots as the last one, the Veritas Grand Slams. Then we have a total saddle fit, shoulder relief girth, short points, uh, plenty on getting an Antares stud girth as well as press clay, but I do not have it yet, a one that actually fits with this saddle. The saddle is the Antari saddle. If you saw my last video, you would know about it. I uh, don't have the stirrups on it. Just realized that. <laughs> Usually I would have my free jumps on this. They're getting quite old and I do definitely need new ones. But my stirrup leathers are prestige. This is an old Gilby pad. They used to be so popular in 2014, 2015. I remember going on Tumblr and everyone was obsessed with these. It also has Jericho <laughs> embroidered under the saddle and HLH embroidered on the other side. This <laughs> saddle pad, you're probably wondering what the hell is that saddle pad? The saddle pad is a sample which I got and it is an absolute mess, but it cost $400. So technically it is the most expensive saddle pad I own. It's also the ugliest. It's got H Electric Equestrian, it's got a jumping horse under the girth points. It has this, which is just hideous, and it has, it's all about the horse along the spine, which has a random comma instead of an apostrophe. I don't know how they managed that because I sent them the logo. The bridle, Dexter has never had a double rider one before, so he's kind of wondering what is going on. <laughs> but. It is a dressage bridle that I got for Jerry. It is PS of Sweden and it is definitely my most expensive one. The other side, HLH, as you can see. And yeah, this is definitely my most expensive pack setup, mainly just because the saddle is custom and Antari saddles are very expensive. And also the bridle was very expensive too. I don't know really why I bought it, to be honest, because I haven't ever used it in a competition. But at a point there, I was planning on doing lots of medium dressage on Jerry, and so I would be using it lots, but alas, I decided I hated dressage. Well, don't hate dressage, but just don't like competing in dressage as much as I like competing in show jumping. It also has a brow band, which didn't actually come with the bridle, but I got because I needed a smaller size because Jerry has a tiny cone head. So there's that. So yeah, this is my most expensive tack setup. Hope you guys enjoyed. Jerry, I mean Dexter is over it. So we are leaving. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.